Do you create your own glass cabochons? You know the ones where you put your own design on the back of them? And do they fade on you? Well in this video I'm going to do a tutorial on how to create them and also a few hints on how to try and avoid the big fade. And I'm going to show you that right now. Creating cabochons can be quite fun to do and they're great to use in your mosaics, your glass on glass, your jewellery or any other mixed media project. However they are only suitable for inside. They are not suitable for outside because they just won't go the distance. Now before we begin, they're technically not a cabochon. Although people over the years have been classing them as cabochons, but technically a polished stone is a cabochon. But because people are now classing these as cabochons, for the purpose of this video I'm going to class it as a cabochon and use that name throughout. Now before you start printing and using your home bubble jet printer, you need to know what type of ink is in the bubble jet. Now many years ago companies were selling home bubble jet printers with a dye based ink in. Now there's a couple of reasons why they did that, A because of cost always cost and B because the ink was more vibrant. But the problem with your home bubble jet dye ink is that it fades and it can fade quite quickly if it's out in the sunshine or it's in a full light situation. So using dye based ink in your home bubble jet is not the best thing to do to create these cabochons. The next one that you can use is a pigment based ink. Now some printers do have pigment based ink which means that the particles in the ink are larger and that's fine because that will be more UV stable than your dye based ink. So if you have a pigment based ink printer then that's good to use. The other one that you can use and I use that more than anything else is a laser printer because it uses a toner so it's going to go a greater distance than what your dye based ink is going to do. Dye based ink is the top of the list for fading. So if you have a toner printer then that will work perfectly well. Then you can go to your commercial printers and they will use solvent inks and things like that and they are the best to use. However, if you're creating three or four or five of these little cabochons, then they're not going to want to know you. Now, some people also use magazines. Now, when you're using magazines, there is also a different quality of paper and ink. So you're better off using a glossy magazine because generally they'll have a better quality ink and a better quality paper. Even then, they can fade but they will certainly be better than something like a really cheap throwaway magazine because those type of magazines use a different paper stock and it's not going to be very good to use. So knowing those details will enable you to get a bit more longevity out of the cabochons that you will be making. Now you're probably asking where do I get the designs from? Well I'm glad you asked that question because you need to go to the net. Now when I say go to the net I don't mean that it's open slather and you download all these photos. What I'm talking about is that you need to go to the net to find public domain photos. Now there's a lot of um, photos in the public domain. The problem with going to the public domain is that they may not have the ones you need or in the size that you need. So the next option is to go and purchase royalty free photos on the net. Now I know what you're thinking I, I don't really want to purchase royalty free photos because they're expensive but that's not the case these days. There's many sites that actually have royalty free photos and designs. So you can go there and because you're only after a small design for the cabochon it's not going to cost you that much. But it does allow you to then use the design without infringing any copyrights. Now there's a lot of these sites and some of them have thousands and some of them have hundreds of thousands and some of them have millions of photos to choose from. And not just photos but actual designs. So they're really good to use and like I said they're not going to infringe any copyright by purchasing them and you've got everything in one place if you need a design. And that's where my designs that 
you saw in my inspiration book came from. I purchased the actual uh, designs and then I changed them around to suit what I wanted and resized them and then I printed them out on the laser printer. And it's the same thing in this case. If you go to the uh, royalty free image sites you will find there's a lot there that you can just uh, print out. Now if they're not the right design, as in the right, sorry, if they're not the right size, you can also uh, go to your program where you print on your printer, a resizing area where you can resize the design. Many have them, it's probably in the rip of the printer or in the, in the actual um, print area. But if yours doesn't, then there are quite a few free programs out there for design work that's free. So you can also download one of those programs and actually put the design in there and resize it and even move things around if required. However, some of them may require a bit of you know, skill in the first place. So you might have to sort of spend a few hours just to learn how to use it. But some of them are really, really basic and I hope by the time this video is done I will actually have a few that I can suggest to you to look at. I tend to use Photoshop or Illustrator but like I say they're a lot more involved but I've got a bit more experience with using those. But there are many good free programs that aren't going to cost you anything that will enable you to use the to do the basics of what you need to create your cabochons or not only your cabochons but many other projects that you might want to use further down the track and, and in large images and things like that and probably in the forums there will be uh, suggestions on which programs that you can use. So that's really covered the basics on getting started in making your own cabochons so now what we'll do is we'll go into the tutorial on how to actually create your cabochon. For the life of me I can't find my cutting mat that I was going to use for this project so I've come up with this melamine piece of board that doesn't have reflection on it because the camera is going to pick up any reflection so this will work but that's your first thing that you're going to need is a hard piece of board or on a hard table or something so that when you push the cabochon down you're not going to get flex in it because that will cause you problems. So a hard piece of board first. The other thing you're going to need or the materials that I use to do this project is uh, also your pattern. Now in this particular instance when I do this I buy the images off the net and then I resize them, I group them and then I print them out onto laser paper. Now a couple of reasons why I do that and that is that printing them out onto a large piece of laser paper rather than one image that saves a lot of space and materials. The other reason is it makes it easy to handle one large piece of paper rather than you know if I was to cut these out individually. That's what I do and also this I keep in my inspiration book which I did a video on that previously and I'll put the link up here as well so that you can see it on the video and that allows you to keep all your images together so you don't lose them. Now you're also going to need a clear adhesive. Now you can use Weld Bond which is, which is quite okay for this or you can use Mac Glue. Uh, I prefer Mac Glue because it's not moisture sensitive like Weld Bond is so if it comes in contact with moisture it won't revert back to its original state. Now you can use also a Australian made product called Prep Multi Adhesive. Now that is also not moisture sensitive so that's another good product to use. It's Australian made product and dries totally clear. It's actually very similar to Mac. You may need a nail file. Now you can use a scalpel blade or scissors or both. Sometimes I use both of those, but it's a personal preference. It's also going to depend on the size of the cabochon that you want to use as to which one you go for. And you know, it really comes down to which one you like to use. In some instances I will use a scalpel blade, uh, especially if I'm cutting out stencils. In other instances I may use scissors. So it's a personal preference. The other thing you're going to need is your glass cabochons. Now these particular ones magnify the image. You can also use clear glass and you can also get different glass cabochons and the thing you have to be careful of is make sure that they don't have any flaws and they're a very good quality cabochon because the last thing you want to do is have your lovely image on the other side and then find that you've got flaws in your glass cabochon. So when you're looking at these buy good quality ones don't always shop on price because 
that will just, you know, that may just cost you money further down the track. So now, once we've got all the materials, we're ready to create our project. We're ready to go. Now, just uh, a little note here is that I've changed over the actual um, sheet that I was going to use with the patterns on because I've got a project coming up. So I thought I might as well use this particular sheet rather than just any sheet out of my inspiration book because when I'm finished, I can actually use these patterns. So that's why I've changed the sheet over. So I've got my glass cabochons, which I'll move across to here. I've got my Mac glue and I'm going to give that a bit of a shake. I've got my gloves on. And the one important thing to remember about Mac glue is it doesn't like the cold. So if you're in a freeze thaw area, many stores will not send you out Mac glue because it can, if it gets cold, it can compromise the bond. When I use Mac glue, I keep it at room temperature along with the materials I'm going to use, for instance, the glass cabochons. And if I'm doing glass on glass with Mac, I also keep the materials, the stained glass at room temperature as well. And I find that works really well for distributing the actual adhesive to it. It makes it flow beautifully. But what happens is when Mac is cold and you apply the adhesive and for instance, if I was to apply, you know, if it was a very cold day and this had been in the cold and the cabochons were cold and I apply the cabochon on top of the Mac glue, it will adhere, but it would crystallize and that will compromise the bond. So by doing it this way, even though I probably, because I'm based here in Australia, I probably don't even need to actually keep it in at room temperature. I do so because I know it's going to work. Now we're ready to go. I've given the Mac a bit of a shake and we're going to apply a little bit of adhesive. Now, when you use Mac, it is quite runny and a lot of people like Mac because it is, I myself do, and others prefer Weld Bond because Weld Bond is thicker. But with Mac, you don't need much. So we'll apply some in the center of here. And don't worry about the air bubble. Okay, we'll get the cabochon out of the wrapping. And we don't want to get fingerprints on that too. So we just want to make sure that our fingers are clean. Well, these are gloves anyway. And then we're just going to drop the glass cabochon on to the top. And you can see all the layer bubbles in there. So now what we're going to do is push gently down, but firmly because we want to squeeze the excess glue out and we also want to squeeze the air bubbles out. So we apply it to where we want, which is I'm off center here. And then we squash it down, and as you can see, the air bubble squeezing up. We just give it a gentle move, and that's it. And that's about where I want the butterfly to be. So we'll do another one, and we'll use another one of these. We'll get rid of that bubble. So we'll apply a bit of adhesive in there. And then we'll take the cabochon out of here. It's great having these in tissue because it keeps, it, keeps them really nice and clean. And then we apply, and I'll just apply that there so you can see it on the camera and again we just give it a gentle push and you can see all the bubbles go out we give that a bit of a push and now what Mac's going to do is it grabs so you've got it pretty well right now what you can do is if you've got a bit of an excess you can get a cotton bud and just wipe around the edge if you, if you want to do that you can you can do that it's not totally necessary unless you apply far too much. If you apply far too much, then you are definitely going to need to wipe off the excess. But in this particular case, I'll do it because I'm on camera, but you don't, I don't really need to. Turn that around. And that's about it. So we'll do the other ones as well. I'll turn those around. Look how clear it is. I hope you can pick up on that. It's very, very clear. So we'll apply some on this one as well. Get in the center. Get the other cabochons out. I love Mac and also prep multi-adhesive. Keep that in mind too for those people in Australia. Put that in the center. And then we'll push firmly down, squeezing out all that air and the excess glue. Bit of a wobble, and that's it. 
Now if you do happen to get any glue on the top here, I think I've got some there, don't be too concerned about it uh, because you can get it off the glass. But MAC, unlike Wellbond, because it's not moisture sensitive, is going to be tougher to get off uh, the surface of your tessera or your cabochons and what it would with Wellbond, because Wellbond you just get a damp cloth and it'll wipe off eventually anyway. So we'll do another one here. And the last one. Down in the centre. Squeeze down. Get rid of all those air bubbles. Because we want it to be crystal clear. And that's grabbed. So that's good. Okay, I've got everything here. It's been 24 hours since these have been made. I've got the scalpel, I've got the file, the nail file, and a pair of scissors. But I think in this instance, we're probably only going to need to use the scissors. But anyway, I've got these other tools here if we do need them. So now what we'll do is um, we'll cut them out, or cut out at least one anyway. I do miss my cutting mat because if I have my cutting mat I'll just use my scalpel blade to cut them out but it'll blunt on here and I'll cut one of these out as well. Okay so we'll put those ones aside. Okay so now what we'll do is we will now just cut out around the edge. Now when you cut around the edge if that's fairly thick around the edge, the glue, then you really have to push a little bit harder into the glass cabochon to cut through the glue. And that's what I was saying, you know, the right amount will make it so much easier than if you just pile the adhesive on it. And, and it's just a waste to waste so much adhesive. Okay, so we've got that. Now, as you can see, it's a little rough around there, so we'll just go in and just prune, oh, prune trim it up. So you're looking at a nice clean edge. So just keep cutting that. There's probably other ways to do these. This is the way I've been doing it and I've had really good success with using them. And I've used them, you know, in projects without a problem. Okay, that's a bit of glue there. Now, the other thing I like to do is flip it over and as you can see the edge here so I get the nail file and what you don't want to do is file it like that because you'll, you don't want to pull the paper away from the actual glass cabochon so I just get it and I just file it like that crossways and it takes care of any loose bits or any you know any any little bits that you want to sort of take off just to smooth it up just to make it neater because really you aren't going to see that anyway because if you're using it in a mosaic you're going to be turning it over and, and you're actually going to be embedding it so uh, you're really not going to see that at all but I find that just trims it up nicely it's kind of like finishing the back of a mosaic I like to I like to paint the back if I'm using weedy board or marmox I like to paint the back of the board as well a black just to finish it off so it looks neat So you just round it off. And that's really about it. So what you end up with is a nice, there's a little bit there, you end up with a nice smooth edge. That's it. And then you've got your cabochon. And of course, like I say, these are great to use in the glass on glass because the light reflects through. Now, if you've got a little bit of glue on it, um, and I don't think this has anywhere, and if you're careful, you shouldn't get any glue on it, then you can just give a little bit of a scrape with your nail and it'll, it'll come off because it's glass. So we'll do another one, we'll do this butterfly one. We'll roughly cut that out. To be honest, I quite enjoy making these, I think they're a bit of fun. And you know, it's quite relaxing. Hope you can see this all on the camera.
Okay, let me just turn that over. We don't want the scalpel blade. And we just file the edge down a bit. Just to get rid of those little frayed bits off it. And it doesn't take long to do this. Okay, and it gives you a nice edge, nice and smooth. Yep, perfect. So there you go. That's how you make cabochons. Well, that's, I'm, I'm sure there's other ways to make it, but that's how I make them. Just as a footnote, when you've completed these, you can seal them. So if you're using weld bond as your adhesive, then seal it with weld bond. If you're using MAC as your adhesive, then use MAC. Now there are other sealants on the market that you can also use. One other final thing is, depending on the paper that you're using, if it's a reasonably porous paper, you may have to seal before you do anything. Because the adhesive can soak into the paper and change the look of the actual paper. You can get a blotchy. That's why I'm saying it's always best to use better quality paper and magazine articles if you're going to use something out of a magazine than what it is to use cheap quality paper. I hope that's helped you. Uh, enjoy, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one. I've just come back on to do a little mini bonus video for you. I'm going to create a small cabochon and then at the end of the video, I'll show you what I'm going to do with it and you can create a product and actually sell it. So I'm just going to do it now. I'm just going to put a bit of MAC glue on this flower and apply this cabochon over the top. I hope you can see that without my big fingers getting in the way. So we'll push that down, get rid of all the air bubbles. There you go, done. And then we're going to do another one. A little birdie here. Push him down as well. This one's got a bit much glue, so I'm just going to wipe that around there. It's got a bit much adhesive on this one because he's only small. And that's it. These have been cured for 24 hours, so they're ready to be cut out. So I'll just cut that one out very roughly. When they're small like this, they can be a little bit fiddly, but anyway. In this particular situation, I would use my scalpel blade, but I can't find my cutting mat. So I'm going to have to do this by scissors because if I use the scalpel blade on this, it will blunt the scalpel blade and you won't get that nice curvature happening that you can with a scalpel blade. So it's a shame I've misplaced it, but I'll find it. Okay, so we're doing that. It's roughly cut out and we'll get our file we're just going to fold the back of that a bit just to neaten it up these look so good when they're done just take that bit of it gee it's hard when you're doing this size with scissors well, it's not that it's difficult, it's just it's a little bit harder. It's better. And when you're finished, you can seal the backs of these with, uh, like I said previously, with Weld Bond or MAC, depending on what adhesive you've been using. And there's also um, sealants out there in the marketplace that you can also use if you don't want to use either of those to seal it. Then what we do, which turned out quite pretty, is we put it in the little bookmark. There you go. 
So what you've basically done is you've created a little bookmark, um, and I know a lot of people don't read books, but books are still reasonably popular. But yes, you've, you adhere that in, and that will enable you now to have a saleable product at very little cost. So I hope that's helped you, and I hope you've enjoyed the bonus video, and I will see you on the next one. Enjoy.